How's it going everybody? So in this video I figured we'd do a fun video uh, because one of my newer subscribers kind of linked me to another uh, health expert YouTube channel and asked me to um, discuss my opinion on the health expert that I was linked to. So um, I'm not going to mention this health expert's name just because every time I do an opinion piece on somebody uh, or you know a video where I criticize another health expert, all of their fanboys who are like fully bought into whatever tribalism that health expert preaches just starts filling my YouTube comments with uh, just things that are like that hurt my brain because they tend to require a very thorough wall of text style debunking which I just don't have the time for these days outside of actual YouTube videos so I'm not gonna like actually mention the health experts name um, but I will kind of discuss the ideas that I saw and these are just this is just one one aspect of this person's kind of like uh, construct of you know philosophy on, on what causes diseases and things okay but there's quite a bit of nonsense that this person kind of spews uh, and so maybe I'll kind of dive deeper into those other things those other claims in the future uh, so basically and by the way, I really do actually like when people kind of like give me counter arguments to some of the things I say in my videos, because maybe not at first, but eventually, um, if said counter arguments are actually decent, uh, it kind of opens my mind a little bit towards possible areas in which I might be wrong. Uh, and you're going to hear some of these areas here in this video. So, uh, so the claim is that. Uh, eating so the claim is that eggs are a primary cause of like all diseases and a primary contributing factor towards most autoimmune illnesses in particular okay and the clay the the me the supposed mechanism that is kind of claimed by this health expert is that eggs are like a hidden source of um, like viruses and parasites and things that are like absolutely devastating according to them okay uh so some of the diseases that this person has kind of suggested are ca are caused by these pathogens that are spread by eggs are things like uh, fibromyalgia um and multiple sclerosis just to name a few okay so uh this is really what i want to focus in on mostly but we'll talk about LDL cholesterol and heart disease later on because I've already made too many videos about it and um, it's kind of like a shaky area but I think that there's a lot of actual uh, real good research on LDL cholesterol and heart disease as far as if it's a plays a causal role in heart disease um, so that is easier to kind of like talk about but I have other videos on that if you're interested uh, and that deals more with saturated fat being proven to increase LDL cholesterol or it's not really cholesterol it's a lipoprotein but the question isn't whether saturated fat increases LDL the question is more so uh, doesn't matter if you have high LDL or not and is there a causal link to between LDL and heart disease um, which the evidence is actually pretty compelling, which is pretty interesting. Um, but we'll, you know, that's, I've already made videos on that. Okay. Uh, so as far as this particular health guru is concerned, they're suggesting that eggs are like pretty strong contributors to autoimmune illness like lupus, uh, multiple sclerosis and fibromyalgia due to some sort of like intracellular pathogens or things and one viral infection in particular that they mention is Epsom-Barr okay and so first of all at a baseline um, the majority of these like autoimmune illnesses they fall more in line with um, syndromes rather than like tangible diseases for example okay and it depends on which ones we're talking about 
So multiple sclerosis typically is like, um, it's tan measurable, okay? Because we see um, kind of like um, scarring in the brain and, and stuff like that. It's a pretty bad debilitating neurodegenerative disease that has measurable symptoms. So it's a, definitely a disease. Uh, things like fibromyalgia though are not really so clear. One person can have fibromyalgia and have the, the exact same symptoms as another, but it can be caused by something completely different, okay? But fibromyalgia is generally, universally uh, characterized by incredible, incredibly devastating episodes of pain. Uh, and I had, uh, well, I'll just say straight up, because I've mentioned this before in videos, that uh, one of my ex-girlfriends who I actually lived with for four years had fibromyalgia. And it was really bad, and especially as somebody who uh, really cared for the person, to, to watch their, their, their loved one kind of like completely tremble in pain and just like nonstop crying because the pain was so devastating. And this person has a really high pain tolerance, generally speaking. Um, but fibromyalgia is not like your ordinary pain, okay? Um, someone who doesn't actually feel fibromyalgia is unlikely to be able to understand how bad it actually is, like what it's like. Um, but, you know, it's suggested to be a neurological disease of some kind. And, you know, you'll have all sorts of different uh, experts say different things about what causes it. Now, I actually had found the triggers to my ex-girlfriend's fibromyalgia and uh, it turned out to be a reaction of some kind, a food intolerance uh, or a food allergy that for whatever reason doctors couldn't find on tests, um, to, specifically to gluten, even in like absolute microscopic amounts, which is weird. Like she would drink triple, triple uh, distilled liquors or something because she was like a bartender at her work and even then somehow i i mean i don't know how there's any wheat left in it she would develop fibromyalgia pains and it was only with alcohol that actually contained wheat and if she happened to have uh trace amounts of wheat that she directly consumed uh without her knowing she would develop pains and then you know so it was pretty hard to like eat out uh, well, it wasn't hard to eat out at all, actually. We had a lot of great fun eating out. But uh, if she was spiked with wheat or, or peanuts. So peanuts, um, you know, she actually used to really enjoy uh, seeds and, and, and peanuts and, and uh, cashews and uh, pistachios, right? But in particular, and peanuts are actually not a nut. They're actually a legume. But when she would consume peanuts it would also uh, cause excruciating uh, fibromyalgia flares. So we had to just completely remove wheat and, uh, and all forms of gluten. But as long as we did that, she, did, she never had pains, ever. Um, so we, you know, we figured that out pretty fast, okay? Uh, well, not pretty fast, it took a number of months. But it was 100% a food intolerance for her. And so anyway, um, she would always eat eggs and she was good to go, okay? So that's, that's one, one thing, okay? That's my direct experience. The second thing is, and I'm just going to say this as an anecdote. This is kind of stupid, I guess, but it's just important to kind of point out. I've been eating raw eggs for, uh, pretty consistently for over four years now. Um, and I eat, I've eat lots of, I've eaten cooked eggs by the dozen for over a decade now, okay? Especially since 2012 when I started to become uh, really involved in like powerlifting and stuff like that. And uh, I did actually have really bad psoriasis and irritable bowel syndrome, but it was actually the whole grains that were causing it, as I've mentioned in previous videos. And as long as I don't eat those, the whole grains, beans, nuts, and seeds, I don't have any um, any symptoms, uh, and the same thing goes for my ex girlfriend who had fibromyalgia. Okay, and so you know, and I've had, and 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 
and I also had extreme panic attacks during that time, which I resolved using mostly a welcoming of anxiety technique. Um, and I've had many clients who had some pretty bad health problems and never once did we just like assume it was like a pathogen or like remove eggs. In fact, uh, a lot of my clients actually reported going to multiple health experts very similar to this person who has really like far-fetched, obscure ideas about what causes uh, health problems. And literally these clients that I'm talking about that I consulted with, like I'm over here charging very, very tiny amount. Like uh, at the time it was like $35 an hour or something at the time. Uh, I've since needed to raise my prices, but their health gurus would charge over $100 an hour uh, and make them buy a shit ton of their supplements, which I don't sell any supplements. I'm not tied to any of the manufacturers that I represent. And this guru that I'm talking about here in this video who talks, who says eggs are bad, also has, uh, he seems to promote like very specific supplements. And in all of his videos, he has like a wall of supplements in the background. So, you know, that's a red flag to me. Um, pretty much every expert that I know that gets money from selling supplements, they have a wall of supplements in the background that they also seem to claim are, you know, things you should take to, to heal yourself, basically. They make money off of them. And when you keep supplements in the background of your videos and every video that you do, that is like a sub that's advertising 101. It's a subliminal brainwashing, so to speak. It's basically just programming your brain to like um, make connections and things through the reticular activating system or the prefrontal cortex, where basically you start to kind of like you'll just more you're more likely to buy a supplement if they're always there flashing in front of your eyes and the expert keeps saying that you need those supplements. However, as I mentioned in many of my videos, uh, the vast majority of my clients that have consulted with me with pretty bad health problems, uh, I just make very simple changes. Almost always the changes that we make is uh, they tell me what foods they're eating and uh, if, I, if they're eating a food that I know commonly causes or commonly triggers symptoms of, a, of an illness, uh, of their particular problems that they mention, we remove those foods. We basically go on an elimination diet. We eliminate foods that commonly cause the symptoms they're consulting with me for. And then we just add in the most nourishing animal foods. Usually it's something like, uh, usually they're under eating protein and they might have some sort of deficiency. So usually it's like we add in a little bit of liver, um, preferably like whole actual real liver and not like some supplement. Um, and then like, eat one gram per pound of ideal body weight of protein a day. And then if they're, you know, if, you know, generally if they're into carbohydrates, cause some of them are not, and you know, depends on the specific individual, I'll have them fill in their carbohydrate needs with fruit. Okay. And, uh, you know, so there's other things to talk about. Like obviously the diet's going to be individualized, but generally that's the basic outline. It's like, Go on, eliminate the foods that are probably can, c triggering your problems. And like, so with fibromyalgia, it's always a food, a food sensitivity with most digestive problems. It's usually a food, a food sensitivity and with skin problems, even, even things like acne, I can, if you look, don't even get me started on the, all the vegans that have extremely horrible acne on their face. It, it's almost, I can almost always tell when someone's eating a shit ton of grains because I see it on their face and it's. It's just a very common thing. It's weird. Um, anyway, so here's the thing though. I'm not like against grains, okay? So after, when we go on the elimination diet, uh, if their symptoms go away, well now we know we found something, right? It's obviously being caused by something they're eating. Then we slowly add certain foods back in, okay? Eggs are never a food we remove and they're almost always eating eggs. So, you know, this is just kind of like, yeah, I haven't dropped dead of like a freaking pathogen from eating raw eggs. I mean, I literally just ate, uh, eight raw eggs and I made like a dairy free, 
uh, yogurt by mixing raw eggs and like frozen uh, fruit with a little bit of gelatin pro uh, protein powder and adding honey on top. And it was actually very delicious. Uh, anyway, so there's that. Okay, so the, the but the big thing is like can like he doesn't reference studies in any of his videos like can someone send me some intervention trials or or some kind of like lab analysis i mean lab analysis are kind of stupid considering human being stomach acid is something like 0 0.8 to about 2 on the ph scale and it depends on the health of the individual um, the less healthier you are the more alkaline your stomach acid will be but your stomach acid, a healthy of a healthy human, if you have healthy stomach acid, should be so acid, like the equal, the stomach acidity should be equal to or similar to that of a scavenger animal, like a hyena or, or like a hyena, pretty much. At least around like 1.5 is like the average typically, and that is generally enough to neutralize uh, a lot of these pathogens, especially if you've already cooked the eggs. Okay. Um, not to say cooking completely destroys all pathogens, but so, I mean, you know, and in the mainstream health, uh, industry, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of experts that, you know, pretty much it's common knowledge or commonly claimed that like, uh, raw eggs will cause seminola and like, you shouldn't eat a lot of like raw meat. But, you know, and, and I personally don't think there's anything magical about eating raw foods. I think maybe raw eggs possibly is, you know, some benefits. But, like, eating a raw meat-only diet, uh, I've done it for, like, two two months. And uh, it's just really hard to fucking chew. <laughs> like, it wasn't as satisfying. So I, I generally don't eat, like, raw meat unless I just feel like it. Uh, but raw eggs, I eat all the time. Like, I literally was at my local grocery store in the deli section where they have, like, the kind of sit-down section where you can eat your food. And I just chow down on, like, uh, a half a dozen eggs, raw eggs, uh, right in front of everyone. And, and no one said anything, but people kept staring out of the corner of their eye. And I was just, like, drinking the raw eggs. I was like, mmm, it was actually pretty delicious, right? But I do think it's an acquired taste. Uh, anyway... Uh, I'm not dead, so, and, you know, there's all of, the, and, and so the, this is actually a common healing protocol for autoimmune illness, is to basically just eat nothing but uh, meat, eggs, and animal foods. This is actually very, very common. So this is kind of going back to uh, what I was saying in my very previous video before this one. The video was entitled, uh, like, How to Find Health Hacks That Work and use science to understand them or something like that, right? Maybe I'll link in the description if I'm not too lazy. Basically, the idea is that um, you could find large communities of people who are healing diseases um, and they're using, and there's, there could be completely separate communities. For example, in that last video, I mentioned how when I was raw vegan, I found all of these people that were eating a raw vegan diet and they were healing themselves from irritable bowel syndrome and psoriasis on the raw vegan diet. And I actually found that the raw vegan diet did heal me of my irritable bowel syndrome and psoriasis. But eventually I found that a like strict meat uh, a strict paleo diet did the same thing, and so did a carnivore diet. And what I found was, well, so in these communities of raw vegans, they would kind of claim that the raw vegan diet is some magical combination, that human beings are not meant to eat meat, and that's basically why the raw vegan diet heals, right? That's what they would say the mechanism of healing was. But then the question is, well, why did I... Uh, heal all of my illnesses uh, just as good on a completely opposite protocol, eating mostly meat. Well, it's because like the raw vegan diet may work for healing the symptoms, but it may be for a completely different mechanism than what those gurus promoting that protocol say. Okay, and so I think this a similar thing is happening with this whole like, you know. Uh, eggs cause disease thing. It, it just doesn't. It just doesn't click. So multiple sclerosis, for example, um, 
there is uh, Terry Walls, Dr. Terry Walls. Uh, she's a very well-documented, prominent paleo guru who basically um, found uh, – so her protocol – and I, I do wonder if maybe uh, her multiple sclerosis was caused by a food intolerance as well. Um, but she kind of believes that there's like sulfur compounds and things like garlic – and uh, vitamin K1 or something from raw, like, leafy greens or something are something that helps heal her or something. But she eats a, you know, a decent amount of meat, and I think she eats eggs as well, um, but also plants. But her whole thing is, like, removing uh, food intolerances that might, like, be destructive to the brain and um, consuming foods that are nourishing and healthy for the brain. It has it has nothing to do with like pathogens like that are like destroying the brain or something, and she has a you know pretty miraculous, well documented uh, healing story, and she's a medical doctor. And this guru that I'm talking about that says eggs are like the devil, it has no medical degree or anything. And in fact, he uh, he claims that like his health information is given to him from a supernatural source. Um, and all of his information, he talks in absolutes. He talks as if his information is the be all end all. And, uh, I haven't dug deep enough yet, but it seems like he it kind of has a, he seems to possibly be suggesting that like, there's some kind of grand conspiracy against humanity. That's like trying to promote egg consumption and keep people sick, which for me, being in, in and out of these paleo and carnivore communities where I literally use principles of just eliminating even like raw leafy greens, for example, and eliminating um, food intolerances to promote healing, okay, and eating mostly eggs and meat and like animal products and you and people report like the most amazing health that they've ever had in their life. It's really like my it's really hard for me to like take such a such a person seriously when he's like, yeah, eggs cause all of these diseases and blah blah blah. Um you know, due to like uh pathogens, Epsom bar and all this stuff being transmitted through eggs, okay? So, as far as like autoimmune illnesses, um yeah, that is just unless you have like a food intolerance to eggs. And mind you, Eggs are a common food allergy, okay? Um, but I see so many people in these carnivore communities healing eating eggs. And so the other thing is, you know, so there was a question on my last video about, um, well, you know, there's YouTube comments where people say that they healed on a certain uh, cleanse or some shit, right? How do you know that that's legit? Okay, so here's a, here's another thing. So... In, in a lot of these like raw vegan communities, which I don't promote, I don't think raw veganism is healthy, but I'm just using it as an example. The raw veganism, okay, as well as even like the raw carnivore diet people who like literally eat raw eggs and raw meat, you will see these people do day of eating videos where they eat these foods on camera. And it's pretty common for them to also include medical documents where they actually show x-rays, what depending on the condition, or um, blood work and stuff like that, where they legit, legit show remission of their disease, or at least of their symptoms. Uh, so I don't know about this guru and, and, his, and the people that say he, they've been healed by him yet. He does have like a book and all this other stuff. Um, I haven't really seen I haven't looked into it enough so I'm not going to like I'm not going to claim that like his followers are liars or are paid shills cuz you know there's a lot of really kooky people on YouTube that make claims like that like Frank Defano who's like yeah everyone who says that they heal on a carnivore diet they're paid by the meat industry and they're like Russian spies still he'll say shit like that that is just again uh schizophrenia really because I don't have evidence that that's the case, and and I don't really care. Like, if if they're healing using a different dietary protocol, then that's good that they're healing. But I do want to find out the mechanism, right? So, anyway, I, I can assure you, um, eggs are not like this crazy, super common source uh, of like pathogens that are contributing to diseases like, um, 
you know, chronic fatigue syndrome and lupus and this and that, okay? And I, I made a video where I actually uh, was discussing one of my clients. He wasn't really a client. He was a subscriber who, who happened to heal himself from being bedridden uh, for like 10 years to all of a sudden being able to go back to the gym. And actually he was on, he said he wasn't working. He was like on disability and then he was able to return to work. And he said, all he did was add liver to his diet and he, he, uh, removed like certain foods that were probably not good for him. And then he also said he did like no fap. Okay. And he commented in that video too, but I, I didn't want to like disclose his name. I don't think in that video, just because, you know, it's better to kind of like give privacy, but uh, and then he gave me a donation afterwards, you know, because I don't, I don't like, I just want to help people heal. You know what I mean? Um, if I'm not spending extra time working on a one-on-one -on -one situation, I don't really care too much about compensation. Um, although of course, if I'm doing a consultation, that's a different story. But anyway, um, yeah, so he just added liver to his diet and you know, removed common food intolerances and he was good to go. And I think he still ate like wheat and shit like that, but he was all right. Uh, so he probably had a nutrient deficiency is probably what happened. Right. And so anyway, like the things that I'm talking about here that contribute to a lot of these illnesses are pretty well documented. Okay. Uh, whereas like pathogens and eggs, like where's the fucking evidence? Like, where's the evidence that eggs actually like, and again, you can measure, uh, vi viruses in a food on paper, like lab analysis of this dozen eggs shows, you know, a high viral load of Epsom bar. Okay. So maybe you can actually find a dozen eggs that actually test positive for a viral load. And typically they'll take it off the shelves, but even if that's the case, right? Coming from a guy who literally just finished, literally just chugged down uh, a shit ton of raw eggs just now, right? <laughs> uh, before making this video. Um, and I have videos where I eat raw eggs. I posted one on Instagram the other day. Uh, the stomach acid should be able to neutralize that unless you just have unha unhealthy stomach acid. So, and I'm not telling people that to eat raw eggs. There's like no reason that you need to, but I'm just, this is just an example of, uh, kind of how, you know, like, and people, and you know, it's common practice in Japan to eat raw eggs and they have some of the lowest rates of disease in, in their, in, in the world. And I have a video actually, uh, highlighting the Japan's like, uh, one of one of the highest uh, consumers of eggs, and yet they have some of the highest life expectancies on the planet. So you know this is just kind of some data and statistics that kind of show otherwise. Um, anyway, uh, so another claim that the guy makes is that uh, eating he says something along the lines of eating eggs, eggs turn to acid in your blood and uh, basically you don't want your bones to like crumble and he, and he kept throwing out all these different like osteo uh, like uh, bone related diseases He's like yeah degenerative disc d disorder uh, osteoporosis and he was just like he, he looked like a freaking freestyle rapper he's like osteoporosis and uh, degenerative disc disorder and he was just like <laughs> spitting out all these names of like uh bone disorders and this is a three minute video that he made uh i could probably if i want to like buy uh some kind of video streaming software so i could kind of play the video back while debunking it because it's so short um anyway he claimed that basically bone disorders are caused by acidic foods and that's a very common thing that's said by people who never read a physiology book which again is why you can't just take you. So the number one thing you should never do is take an authority figure and their opinion on what causes disease and just run with it. Okay. That's the first thing that should not even be in your first line of, of, um, of decision-making because you're letting someone else make a decision for you. Okay. They're doing the thinking for you and you're not thinking for yourself. So authority, you know, again, even if it's me who's saying it, like seriously, um, especially if they sound like solid and certain, like this is what's going on. Again, 
the the more uncertain someone says, like the more kind of like, uh, well, it's a little bit of this, but it's kind of a little bit of that, but we're not too sure. Like the more nuance someone has in their in their ideas, uh, the more accurate they probably are. But the more sure of something that people might be, the less accurate it probably is. The reason why is because health science is a soft science, and nothing is like proven per se. And we're bi we're biologically dynamic organisms who are constantly changing. Our physiology is always trying to adapt to the environment and what we put in it. And um, and uh, so no one intervention acts exactly the same way every single time for every single person. Okay. Um, so it's just really not a, it's a really big red flag when someone just sounds extremely certain of, of, of things. Although, you know, then again, sometimes it's okay to be a little certain, right? Anyway, um, bone disorders, let's talk about that. So acidic foods, um, so here's the thing. Uh, first of all, if you consume and, and, and raw greens and shit like that, this guy claims that that's like a healing food, okay? Can someone please explain to me why anywhere in human evolution where we were hunter-gatherers and we had to actually go out and find uh, foods to like keep us alive, why would we go and select leaves off of a tree, first of all, okay? Uh, it doesn't make much sense because we can't digest cellulose, whereas gorillas and herbivores and frugivores can. So we can't actually convert those leafy greens into usable energy. Okay, and I've I've made videos debunking these vegan doctors who say shit like that. Okay, if you want to eat raw greens, go ahead. But to think that juicing fucking spinach is like a healthy thing to do is absolutely absurd. Okay. And not to mention, of course, there's oxalates. And even a lot of vegans have come out talking about oxalate poisoning uh, with things like almonds and, and raw spinach and stuff. And I personally am not a huge fan of that whole oxalate is a devil theory either. I don't think that there's a lot of evidence to suggest that that's a huge thing for everybody. But there are a lot of people who have autoimmune illnesses that are triggered by oxalates from things like spinach and almonds, etc., so, and this guy claims like freaking spinach is like, and, and re raw greens are like the healthiest health food, okay? You know, evolutionarily, it would have never made sense, you know, for humans to go out and seek leaves off of a tree, okay? Um, fruit actually gives us a decent amount of calor it gives us calorically usable energy, but of course, wild fruits probably didn't have as much... Uh, energy from carbohydrates at the time, if you know, uh, pretty much all the spinach and all the leaves that we eat, uh, that we buy for like $6 a pound from the grocery store, they were like hybridized and literally selectively bred by humans in nature to be able to be eaten without killing us because they were so full of poisonous compounds that we couldn't just eat them outright. So, you know, eating raw leaves off of a tree, it just not really a source of, new, of usable energy for humans. But anyway, that's a stupid fucking appeal to nature point. Um, but things like tubers that have usable energy, things like fruits, things like meat, uh, you know, a hundred thousand or more like calories worth of energy on a typical kill of meat. Um, so just, you know, kind of throwing that out there. Um, you don't really need to fucking eat spinach to neutralize acids. Um, what I'm trying to get at is like eating spinach is not going to have some magical properties that alkalize your blood. Um, so anytime someone says body pH will change based on food, you have to specify, is it blood? Is it bone? Is it, is it stomach pH? Is it colon pH? What part of the body are we talking about? If we're talking about blood pH, the kidneys do filter out, um, uh, acidity and stuff like that to maintain a tight, neutral blood pH balance at all times. If you have acidic blood, you will know because you'll be on the verge of death, okay? Any, any freaking health expert that tells you, uh, you know, you're gonna, your blood will become acidic from the foods you eat is an absolute charlatan. That's called, that's uh, metabolic acidosis. That is absolutely a serious health problem. 
if your blood goes even a slight bit above neutral pH, you are lucky to fucking be alive. Call 911. That's a serious health problem, okay? This is very, very important to understand. And the same thing goes with blood that is a little bit too alkaline. You know, it's a very, it's a very slippery slope. It's a very tight rope to walk as far as pH balance. Because if you're just slightly too alkaline, that can cause extreme health problems as well. Uh, especially like just respiratory symptoms and you could literally stop breathing. It's pretty bad. So yeah, um, what I'm trying to get at is that's a very uh, far-fetched idea that you will fucking know. You don't need some random fuck who gets who says he gets his fucking health advice from, from spirits, spirits or something to tell you that too much acid is a problem because – if you actually had to worry about that, which unless you have a, a actual kidney disease, you don't. You don't need to be eating fucking spinach because if your blood goes too acidic, you'll probably pass out and fucking die. Okay, that's the first thing. So then the second thing is that it is true. He was kind of alluding to the the fact that uh, the body actually pulls uh, alkaline minerals from other places to maintain that alkalinity. Uh, and offset the acidity in the blood. So that's true. So let's say that for whatever reason you are, you have uh, a bit of like a, uh, too much acidity in the circulation. Uh, you generally can measure like the pH of your urine, for example. Um, or you'll have like acidic compounds in the urine. Okay, let's just say that, right? Generally, the, uh, the, the body will, will kind of pull out uh, things like calcium from the, from the, from the bone to stabilize, to keep that, that blood pH neutral, and to filter out the blood and, and maintain that neutral pH. So the blood pH stays neutral thanks to the body being able to pull calcium and alkaline minerals from other places to offset it. So you'll, you'll know this if you read a freaking textbook on the subject, okay? Specifically, um, clinical dietetics, I believe, yes. Uh, that was actually on the first, like, three chapters it was discussing that. Because it's a very important topic. So, and I don't know why so many fucking people, including like doc, uh, chiropractor Eric Berg, for example, has these alkaline theories that are literally debunked in the first three fucking chapters of clinical dietetics, okay? Uh, and, we, and this is a very easy thing to measure on human subjects. It's not like some kind of uh, thing that is hard to prove. This is one of the very few things that we can prove. Okay, is how is how these things work. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, so yeah, the body can pull calcium from the bones to offset the acidity. Okay. Now the thing is, this guy's like, yeah. So if you eat too many acid-forming foods, you're going to your bones are going to disintegrate. Okay. And he claims eggs are one of them. The problem with that is he also says, so you've got to eat a shit ton of raw greens in order to offset the acidity so your bones don't fall apart. Look, motherfucker, okay, pardon my fucking cussing, but this is, this is a, a very serious, this is a very toxic source of information here. If you freaking think that you're just going to eat nothing but raw greens in order to support your fucking bones for your whole life, you are on the fast track to osteoporosis. Telling somebody that you need to avoid animal proteins and eat more leafy greens to support healthy bones is absolute fuckery. Okay? That's dangerous advice. And I and this is something I'm a, I'm pretty like conclusive on, as if you can't tell. It really kind of got me going when I heard that. Uh, number one, okay, so let's just, so it's a, so it is well documented, number one, that um, the, the more animal proteins, or sorry, the more protein someone eats, the more total protein uh, a, a human subject will eat, the higher their calcium absorption from the foods that they get, okay? So in, in, the, st in, the, in the stomach and in the intestine, you actually have an, uh, an, uh, an increased absorption of calcium with more protein. Protein increases the absorption of calcium. 
there is a lot of evidence on this, okay? Uh, and we also have, uh, is it prospective studies over the course of a lifetime where we see past the age of 65, uh, the number one cause of, of death past the age of 65 in elderly humans is actually um, hip, hip fractures and side effects from, from injuries relating to, to falling, okay, falling, okay, and then pneumonia in the hospital after being hospitalized for a fall. Okay, falling is a is a is a major disease past the age of sixty five in elderly individuals. Because if you made it to sixty five, you probably at that point are less likely to get things like heart disease and diabetes per se. Because it usually happens to people from the age of forty to sixty five. Anyway, the next thing on that is um, the older you get, the more anabolically resistant you get, the more protein you need. Okay, and then the next thing of that is the number one predictor of longevity past the age of 65 is actually muscle mass, okay? Um, and and you actually see uh, in a dose-related a dose-related fashion, the more protein humans eat over the lifespan, uh, the, the higher bone mineral density one has. And these are epidemiological studies. They're population studies. So they're all, they're not good for their correlation versus causation type of shit. But it the there's not a lot of data that just shows you know the opposite. Okay, it it the majority of the evidence suggests either neutral to pretty significant benefit as far as like uh, bone mineral density and uh, calcium absorption with protein intake. Okay, so that's the first thing, and and those are just like more end stage. Uh, type of um, results on older populations that have been eating this way over a long period of time. Um, and now if you look at some of the actual foods that were eaten in, in some of these surveys, you'll see the majority of it is from uh, eggs, dairy, and white meat chicken actually. Uh, because most people think red meat is the killer. So yeah, and so that's kind of like another like kind of score for eggs, I guess, but not really. Okay. And there's a lot of confounding variables, right? Like vitamin D and other things, magnesium intake, uh, and K2 and vitamin A, but, and then of course, weight training as well. But anyway, um, leafy greens, how many raw vegan guru or how many vegan gurus in general, do you know that promote like this leafy green thing? And it looks like they've kind of melted in their own skin. And by the way, this guru who's like preaching this shit looks like a like a, a freaking pile of twigs. I'm sorry if that sounds like I'm talking, uh, talking like uh, smack about him, but you know, uh, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Okay, um, saying that protein causes acidity, which causes bone breakdown, is really foolish when you look at the data on it, the evidence on it. This is why it's important to not just look at anecdote and to not just look at um, expert opinion either, okay? Um, and I would love to see uh, like vegans or especially raw vegans who eat nothing but leafy greens and fruits over the course of their lifespan. I'd love to see freaking bone mineral density tests on them. There's uh, a, a, um, a keto a ketogenic dieting uh, couple um, who I'm not really a fan of, but they, they, it's a uh, high intensity health with Mike M Mutzer. Is that his name? And he has his wife and say whatever you will about them. Cause I don't follow them anymore. Cause they're political bullshit. I'm not a fan of them anymore, but they actually uh, went and got um, DEXA scans after eating mostly nothing but animal foods and a damn near close to carnivore diet. And they were doing extreme intermittent fasting with him and his wife and also some weight training that in my opinion wasn't even that good of weight training. And uh, they showed like an improvement in bone mineral density um, compared to years prior. So they actually increased their bone mineral density eating mostly animal foods, doing intermittent fasting and weight training and not really eating green vegetables. So, and I see this commonly, you know, and I've had clients who came to me trying to increase bone mineral density. So. The evidence suggests this guy is full of shit. Basic physiology, like the first three chapters of a clinical dietetics book, says this guy is full of shit. 
um, the guy kind of calls him, tells himself, you know, basically says himself he's full of shit because he says he gets his information from a higher source. Um, if you really think eating raw greens is going to save your bones, that's your that's natural selection, in my opinion. Uh, so anyway, another thing is uh, to offset any kind of bone mineral loss, okay, that you want to, okay. So first of all, what's the most alkaline mineral um, that kind of is at play here that this guy, the behind this mechanism? Calcium being pulled from the bone. So how do we offset this whole idea of calcium being pulled from the bone to neutralize acidity, okay? I, even if this was a problem. Number one, increase the protein intake. Number two, the big thing is calcium. Just eat more calcium, okay? If you can tolerate dairy, consume whatever dairy you're comfortable consuming that's also high in calcium, okay? But for me personally, I don't eat dairy because it causes sinitis problems, okay? Um, what I consume for my calcium is sardines. So I, what I literally just had a couple hours ago, I had like... Uh, I had I had uh, raw eggs, quite a few raw eggs, and then I had uh, eight ounces of sardines with the small bones, okay? Because they're easy to digest. Uh, you could, there's people that grind up eggshells and consume them or give them to their dogs uh, as a calcium source. You know, when you're feeding animals like a calcium source, it's vitally important because they can have osteoporosis and it can show up really fast. So that's a pretty good test to see if the calcium is working. Um, so and another thing is like you can consume bone meal, right? Uh, I don't know about bone meal. Uh, I've tried that on and off. Um, seems to dehydrate me for some reason, but, uh, I do like to just consume whole sardines is what I'll do. And then I might eat some eggshells or something like that, uh, et cetera. So yeah. Um, and that's pretty much what the evidence suggests as well. Um, provided it depends on where the where the study is coming out of because you'll hear some of these gurus claim that uh and and like the freaking countries that eat the most dairy they have the most bone loss but then you find out these are like winter town countries like the um like the like the the really snowy areas of europe and stuff like that where the sunlight hardly ever ever shows itself and these people are highly deficient in vitamin d pretty much you know, of course, in populations where they don't get vitamin D from the sun, regardless of their of their dairy intake, they're probably not going to be utilizing most of that calcium due to vitamin D deficiency. So it's better to look at populations of people who eat the most calcium who also get enough uh, sunlight. But again, it's nuanced, right? And I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe eggs are like the source of pathogens and like one day I'm going to die of at least seminola poisoning or something, right? Maybe my bones are going to shatter, right? I guarantee you this expert doesn't lift weights. Uh, I literally uh, – don't even get me started on this like because I don't I, – I've been on – like I have not eaten any raw greens at all, um, let alone like alkaline-type foods for the last four years since I started that whole carnivore thing, which I don't eat carnivore these days. I, I eat tonic herbs and a wide variety of other things, but – um, I'm doing jujitsu constantly. I'm lifting heavy weights constantly. Why are my bones not breaking? Why do I not have a shit ton of fractures or stress fractures? Uh, literally, I felt like I felt like my my bones were kind of like getting soft because I haven't uh, hit the heavy bag in forever, you know. And I like to hit the heavy bag with no gloves so that I can strengthen my knuckles. And uh, I kicked the living shit out of the bag. Obviously, with my bare shins, right? I don't wear shin guards in the heavy bag. I don't, it doesn't make any sense. Um, and I haven't broken my leg. Why not? Maybe uh, at the very like I'm not. I don't have osteoporosis caused by acidic meat, and uh, freaking raw greens are not like my savior because I don't eat raw fucking greens. So, but back when I did eat raw greens, that was when I felt my worst. Okay. Uh, and a lot of these uh, people who are healing autoimmune illnesses on carnivore, they report when they add raw greens back, not all of them, but some of them, like Michaela Peterson, for example, that their autoimmune symptoms come back. So, yeah, I mean, uh, these are not the best arguments maybe, but 
Uh, maybe if, if I get people kind of like poking holes in my arguments down below, maybe I'll come up with better ones, right? Uh, because there's a lot of shit to say on this. It's just, um, I don't know, it's just me kind of vomiting my fucking thoughts about this out, right? But basically, when, whenever, and the other thing, this guy talks about fucking detoxes and uh, freaking heavy metal poisoning, which is a real thing, but it's not as bad as people make it out to be. You know, talking about like the environment's gonna kill you. Like, basically, he makes it sound like you need to be fucking scared, and uh, the only savior is his information. The only savior is his fucking supplements. And uh, that's a common cult uh, building kind of strategy. Uh, look at these news corporations. What do they do? They fill the fucking society with fear and they make you reliant on their fucking news. Every time you see your favorite news organization post a new video or article, you're like, oh, fuck, I got to read it because I might die tomorrow. You know, it's like, oh, fuck, like I need to learn about the, you know, like Dr. McCullough, who's also like a low carb guy. And he might and he says a lot of the same things that I say. But I don't promote his fucking material because I know that he has kind of like that supplement salesman fear tactic type side to him too, you know? Um, for me, it's not about, oh, do they believe what I believe? It's about uh, where's the red flags? Are they saying shit that just is easily like debunkable using like some basic compare and contrast uh, rational thinking, right? So, but the big thing here is like, look, motherfucker, there's so many people reversing these diseases that he claims are caused by eggs while they're eating fucking eggs. And in fact, the very foods he says are health promoting, like raw greens are a lot of times foods that are causing these, uh, uh, some of the symptoms that this person seems, says those raw greens will heal. This is a really hard fucking thing to understand when you first get into health. When you start to see all these people who are healing themselves by removing these foods like juices, raw greens, fruits and vegetables, and they're like, bro, like if I eat that, my lupus will flare up. You know, you're like, well, what the fuck? It's fruits and vegetables, bro. You got to be lying. You got to be paid by the meat industry because fruits and vegetables are healthy, man. I've been told that all my life. You know, Hulk Hogan fucking said to eat my vegetables, man, so it must be fucking true. Fucking Popeye ate spinach, bro. <laughs> you know? It's not a matter of is fruits and vegetables healthy or not. It's a matter of you as an individual have a health, uh, have a, an, a food intolerance for some reason, and you just need to accept the fact that you got to cut those foods out. And the biggest thing is they don't fucking provide anything that you need to survive or even thrive. That was a huge obstacle for me when I first got into this. I'm like, bro, how am I going to survive if I can't eat brown rice? It has all these essential nutrients, the government tells me. And here I am eating nothing but meat, fruit, and tonic herbs. And I'm like, bro, I feel great. <laughs> right? But now I'm bulking up from an next tournament. Kind of. Not really. So I'm probably going to eat add jasmine rice in just as like extra calories or whatever. But I don't know. I haven't decided yet. So the big thing here is like superhuman. The path to superhuman health is not fucking complicated. But these fucking charlatans want you to believe that you need to be chugging celery juice, you need to be taking their supplements, you got to be scared of heavy metals, you got to detox, you know? And then other people will try to tell you, oh, you've got to avoid red meat, you've got to eat um, a plant-based diet, you know? you know, or they'll tell you, oh, supplements and herbs are bullshit and they don't work, you know? They'll tell you, you know, it, uh, as long as you count your calories, that's all that matters, like there's some – I guess it is complicated, but it's complicated to figure out that it's actually simple, if that makes sense. Uh, anyway, I need to stop this video. Uh, if you have any questions or want me to kind of elaborate on something further, let me know in the comments. Uh, and yeah, uh, if I – you know, s subscribe. See if I die one day of uh, fucking pathogen – egg induce like egg toxicity or something right <laughs> right oh no my my fucking i need look at these forearms bro right this is all because of all my leafy greens alkalizing my my fucking blood bro look at that look at my look at my wrist look at my wrist or is that just my a one whole forearm is it just one giant forearm so i was a milk baby okay and i and my brother was actually a juice baby 
I didn't have cavities or anything at all my entire life really and I never broke I broke a pinky once because some dumbass like a uh, long story uh, but I always jumping off of fur jumping off furniture jumping off trees doing crazy shit getting into combat sports I used to skateboard and always fall and I never broke a bone but then I I I knew a dude who was playing tag on his uh, garden lawn really thick grass and I and he just kind of like fell or whatever and he broke his fucking arm uh, but I was a milk baby I was never really into green vegetables and I think that that's why I have such thick bones and I'm so fucking healthy really uh, but you know charlatans want you to believe you gotta fucking chug fucking spinach juice like you're a fucking cow or something it's fucking ridiculous alright talk to y'all fucking next time